Okay. Hey everybody, I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless meeting of the Town Council for June 12, 2023. If you can join us all in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. As we start all meetings, how we conduct them, we will work together to better our town. We all have an equal voice. We may disagree, but we will do so with civility and respect because in the end, we are all neighbors. A few announcements. Uh, yoga in the Park returns June 17th through September 2nd. Um, Jack, that's good to know for you. Uh, wall park to close for construction on June 19th for the remainder of the season. We have a drive in movie on June 17th. Do we know what movie it is yet? It's Back to the Future. Okay. Um, and then uh, the uh, Heritage, I guess, is having a historic structures of the North Park lecture on June 15th. Uh, does anyone else on council have any announcements to go to the, go to the order? No. Okay. Very good. Uh, if there's anybody moving on here, does anyone here want to make any public comments on any of the agenda items? If you do, uh, please approach the microphone, state your name and address, and you'll have five minutes. Okay. Um, presenter, I have a, a, a comment from one of my constituents, sure. if I may read it. Please. Uh, this is from Darla Rocco, 8475 Post Road, regarding the uh, open burning ordinance we'll be discussing tonight. Um, she says, all the fire burning should be banned in McCandless as it is a health hazard for everyone and pollution issue for the environment. With the recent Canadian wildfires and pollution, our area was in code orange for code orange air alert for three days. This was a very unhealthy situation for the elderly, anyone with a lung condition or asthma and young children. Even healthy individuals complained of burning eyes and headaches. The burning of wood releases organic chemicals that we breathe into our lungs and very small, small particles that can enter into the bloodstream and cause short and long-term health issues. This past Saturday night, my neighborhood experienced an overwhelming smell of smoke from someone's backyard fire. We were unable to enjoy sitting out on a cool evening in our backyard or front porch. After just a few minutes in the smoky environment, our hair and clothing were inundated with a nauseating smell. Additionally, Western Pennsylvania is in a moderate drought situation with approximately 20 days of no rain. The state parks have recently banned campfires. As a 30 year resident of the town of McCandless, I feel that much more can be done for our health and safety. We need to step up and ban all fires, whether they be contained or open. Thank you, Darla Rocco. Anybody else on council have any? Thank you, no. Okay. And seeing none here, those assembled. Okay, I'm moving on. Uh, the meeting minutes from the May 22nd meeting were included in our packet. Does anybody have any revisions before we move to approve them? Hearing none, uh, the floor is open for a motion to approve the meeting. Dr. Roberts. I make a motion to approve minutes from May 22nd. Okay. I'll second. second. Okay. Everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Next up, reports of the committees, the Public Safety Committee. Dr. Rafa, can you run us through that? Yes, thank you. Um, you'll see that the Chief's report is in the um, in your packet. Uh, looks as though there were a lot of UI setups this month. Um, and uh, a little bit of, uh, so a couple of officers took place with the torch run. I had the pleasure of meeting two of those young men and they were talking all about how they were running with this torch. I don't know if they knew what it really meant, but they did a nice job and they were very excited about it. Uh, is there anything you'd like to, to, to add to anything that's on here? Uh, unless anyone has any questions, uh, you will have it in front of you. There was an update. I don't know if you folks got a picture of the dog. The dog's in training right now, maybe make mention of that. Uh, I believe Officer Davis goes in a week or two to begin training with him. Uh, training as usual. Uh, we had a visit by North Allegheny baseball team. Um, like you said, Doc, the torch run. Uh, all officers completed their annual firearms qualifications, annual mandatory and service training. 
And uh, also in May, the Bigs and Blue program concluded the school year. So uh, we were busy. Um, well, I'll keep it short and sweet. Yes, ma'am. How many participants in the Bigs and Blue program do you have? So at the moment, we continue to try to recruit, but at the moment, we have three mechanics officers, myself being one of them, and two medics. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, we'll grow the program each year. You know, it, it wasn't that big, so it, it is growing. And first. how many of uh, the younger people do you have then? With so them? each of us have, we are the bigs, each of us have a little oh, okay. that the school is able to pair us with. Nice. And you, you, you're, you, you're the big and little with each other for the entirety of the school year and beyond. I believe they age out of it after maybe, don't quote me, but I believe after the major fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So you follow them for two or three years and then they and they pair you with another one. That's a great program. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, folks? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the fire marshal report is in uh, your packet. It's pretty much in order with pretty much last month's. Um, I didn't see anything new. Uh, so did you uh, want to comment on anything? Uh, I, I don't have anything to add at this time. So if anybody has any questions. Maybe you could speak to the neighbor of uh, Trish with the new ordinance. Well, I believe that's on the agenda at the end, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. Yeah, I think that's sort of up for discussion for, for you all. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, building permits, they're in your packet. Uh, nothing unusual. Find a lot of permits this month. Um, <coughs> any questions about anything? Everybody's doing construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, moving on to the code enforcement, it's also in your packet. Uh, pretty much the same thing as it was last month. Any questions? <coughs> no? Oh, I just want to make a comment. I had a constituent complaint about a neighbor's yard justified, and Alex went up and investigated it, and he took care of it immediately, and the neighborhood's very happy. So I just want to give kudos to Alex on that. Good. Thank you so much for that. Um, liaison reports, personnel board, Carolyn. Um, so we didn't have a meeting in May. We are going to have our next meeting um, next week on Wednesday, the 21st of June. So nothing to report on that. Thank you. Volunteer mm -hmm. writer steering committee, Mrs. Eisenreich. Uh, we didn't have a meeting either. Our next meeting is in July. Okay. Any public comment on the public safety report? Council. That concludes my report. I'll uh, run with the report of facilities management since Mr. Singer's not with us this evening. Um, first up, the public work activity report. If anybody has any questions, good job here. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, just a few quick things. Um, June 19th, um, we are starting Wall Park uh, field renovations and also um, the Lorraine Rogers playground area will be closed for four weeks, possibly six weeks. We're installing uh, um, a large sandbox, picnic tables, benches, some landscaping over there to finish that off. Um, July 17th, the paving program is scheduled to start. Right now, we believe we're starting with Grubbs Road. Um, we're going to give everyone probably three weeks notice um, before we start. Uh, we have a, I think the utility and gas company is still finishing up on some of the roads we have planned. So um, the original agreement with the water and gas company is they would be done by the end of this month. Um, if that's the case, there may be adjustments, but as of right now, Grubbs Road will be first on the list. And then the other thing is um, in May, we started a uh, basically a storm, uh, a uh, detention pond crew. All they do all day is cut. 
So I think we're up to about 17 ponds right now. The rest of them um, are going to be a lot more work. I'm working with gateway engineers right now to try and do as much in-house as we can. But um, but that's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for getting that started. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else have anything, Jeff? Yeah. Very good. Uh, next up, liaison. Oh, we have the uh, stop sign ordinance discussion. Do you want to do oh. that here? Yeah, we, we can do that. Um, the we uh, gave you guys a quick memo just to explain that in the state of Pennsylvania to make a stop sign fully legal and enforceable by the police department uh, that we have to pass an ordinance. So uh, every year, a few years, we try to clean up anything that uh, we've had to put out there or anything that we plan to put out there. So uh, there's a couple intersections that uh, DPW, um, the Department of Public Works recently um, identified and uh, checked with Gateway Engineering on the proper placement of stop signs. So we just wanted to give the head nod that we were going to put together that ordinance with uh, Solicitor Corbel. Um, last one we did was 2017. Um, or, if, you know, we haven't had a lot of new developments, so it happens whenever there's usually after a new development comes in. Well, we have to work with PennDOT on that too. This doesn't need to be worked with PennDOT. I threw that on there just to explain the proper placement of uh, stop signs and also that we need an ordinance to enforce them. So we're cleaning something up. This is essentially a cleanup, something we should probably do, you know, every two to three years or every time we put in a new stop sign. So you're looking for just head nods. To just to put together the ordinance. Team, put the ordinance mm -hmm. together. Yep. Everyone. Okay. Okay. You know. All righty. Next, the liaison reports. Casey, would you want to run us through the environmental? advisory committee. there's a uh, advisory committee here for the town council there's one over at the library i believe and we just want to mirror that same thing at the eac we want to be able to have a student advisor that'll help us with our connections with the school district yeah. and recently the eac submitted a um, event request for this we had talked recently about having that uh, handled administratively. So just wanted to let council know about that process and that the EAC was gonna go forward with a student environmental advisory committee member um, because they do have, they, they have had people that have shown interest in doing things just under the EAC versus the junior council program. Does that position need to be approved by council or the EAC select out of applicants? Well, I was under the opinion, I think Steve brought this up, that we don't need to be approving everybody, that if we basically have just an agreement that we can apply mm -hmm. these people to these positions. Okay, great. So the EAC would interview, if there's multiple candidates, the EAC would interview correct these students and pick them pick one. Correct. Is everybody mm -hmm. comfortable with that? Yeah, I think it's a good plan because yeah. they have a lot of kids that are involved in very passionate. Very passionate. Yeah. Nice for a kid's resume, too. And we think it'll help us with our environmental cleanups. And the cleanup. Oh, yeah. Well, the last years. one, yeah. that last one, we must have had at least, that I talked to, at least 10. And they were, they were doing, they were just wanted to be there. They were there themselves. They weren't with a group of kids. They just came by themselves. So I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. So Head on all around, I'm seeing. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else about the EAC, Mr. Casey? No, not not at this point. Okay. Dr. Rafa, it looked like there's no there was no tech meeting. Do you have anything to add? No, we did have a technology oh, meeting. Okay. It was uh, on Wednesday, last Wednesday. Okay. Sorry, that was the agenda, but that part was written before we had the meeting. So yeah. Um, but in any event, um we had our meet our, our meeting and that uh there were a lot of things that were discussed about things that have been done and things that still are in the works of being done that are being delayed because of various reasons. Um, as far as update on the, uh, the plate smarts, the, the license plate readers, I know that Chief Hawk and Mr. Shoneman, they're in the process of getting some quotes on that um, so that we um, can get those readers up and going. 
uh, they want to have those connected also with the parks, right? Correct. Uh, other things were with the new uh, software, as far as the finance package and some of those things. Um, and there's some things that have to be put in place before we can do those. Uh, and then later on, um, we are going to, I'll turn it over to Brian and the new business, uh, we'd like to make a proposal, and this is coming from the technology committee. Yeah, the rest is in your packet for the last one. Any questions for Dr. Roth? No. And then uh, no meeting for the stormwater management ad hoc committee. Correct. Uh, then uh, is there anyone here uh, in the public that wants to make a comment on any facilities management items? If you do, please come to the microphone, name and address. Okay, seeing none. Okay, next up is the services. Ms. Clunan, can you walk us through? Thank you. Um, we will start with the McCandless Township Sanitary Authority, Mr. Casey. It's in your packet for filling up and do to report. Okay. No further questions. Moving on to the McCandless Franklin Park Ambulance Authority. Uh, the May meeting notes minutes are in your packet. Uh, I do want to thank them for a great open house event that was hosted. We had a wonderful time. I think it was good response from the public and everyone who took the time to visit. And uh, also to let everybody know that our next meeting is Tuesday, June 20th, 6 p.m. And um, if there's any questions. Just how is the grant affecting them now? They receive some money. And, and direct to, I, I don't know exactly where well, it's going yet. yet. Yeah. Just, the, I'm going to, I can ask that though. I can make sure that comes up on Tuesday. Yes, please. Yeah. Trish, there. 100,000 plus a hedge budget. Is that, is there any one time things that have done, is it, that have caused that? In the first five months, or there's just a trend. That's there's been a real concerted effort with um, getting the subscriptions and the and the capital and the campaign. So they they changed the so one part of the year they put out word to um, one feeder pattern like McCandless for subscription, and then the other part of the year for donations, and then they flip flop that. So. Um, there's been a lot more marketing of that and getting word out, and that's helped quite a bit. Um, but I think we are still, and um, Ms. Caliendo is here that could talk to this as well. We're still running that deficit on every call. Um, that is not going away anytime soon. And the fact that we're still not making, uh, not we, the, mechan the ambulance authority is still not covering their cost to provide service at this time. And I would highlight every ambulance service is in that same issue. If there's no further comment. Any comment from the public on if you yeah if you that's okay. I'm Rosha County Endo um one oh five two nine Abbey and I'm Chair of the uh, Ambulance Authority. Dr. Robert, you had mentioned something about a grant. Which specific grant were you? Uh, the one from the our new rep, Arvin. From our, Arvin. Oh, okay. Has that, has that been received? I don't believe that's yet been received. Um, we have been very diligent in applying for grants this year. Uh, in fact, the latest one was for $50,000 of which we need to replace our garage doors. Um, so that's what we're going to be using that for. We had a, in addition to our subscription, we had a capital campaign and we received tremendous support from our community. I believe $140,000. Uh, it was, it was just mind boggling and, and very grateful that we received that much money. Um, and uh, so we were very happy for that. And um, operationally, we're doing okay. Uh, but we just bought a $250,000 ambulance with $100,000 to help stock it. So on our capital side, um, obviously, we're not, we're still not meeting, meeting all the needs. So hopefully that answered your questions. Yes, yes. Well, if you don't Thank have the money, you can't do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, if there's no further questions, um, move on to the Northland Public Library Authority. Um, Mr. Singer's not here, but there were uh, several notes in the packet. 
Any questions or comments? Any public comment on the services committee? And then if there's nothing from council, move on to old business. Okay, we have a couple of uh, ordinances here uh, that, that have come in front of us before. We, we've seen these, so they should go first. They should go pretty quick. The first one is the Knox box. Does anyone, I guess, Jeff, we might as well stay up here to ask, answer any questions. We've seen them before, but uh, so the first one is to revise our Knox box I guess, ordinance. So, does anybody have any questions for Jeff? Does anyone need it to repeat up or, or summarize? Okay. Okay. If there's no questions, the floor is open for a motion. Okay. Marianne. I'll motion to adopt tentatively identified ordinance number 1535, amending part 15 of the town code of ordinances, fire prevention code, by inserting a new article 1511 titled Knox Box, Knox Box, to require certain structures to have a key, box, key lock box installed on the exterior of the structure for safety purposes and to provide fines and penalties for violations thereof. Second. Second, Ms. Clunan. Uh, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Next up is the open fire and burning regulations. Did anybody have any questions or comments? That would be. Oh, we had that. Did you? So, Mr. Casey had asked me about okay. kind of comment on that. So, I'll kind of give you an idea of. <clears throat> Of what's been happening um since the weather has warmed up and we it seems like summer's kicked off a little early for us here in pittsburgh usually it um, doesn't kick off till late may but um the fire companies have been dispatched to what i would consider from last year uh, a little more um we'll call it say calls for open burning um, a lot of times there are smoke investigation or Somebody sees fire, doesn't know if something's on fire, and then, of course, the fire companies are dispatched, so they show up, find out it's an open burn. Um, not all of them are um, illegal, we'll call illegal. Um, you know, talking with the fire companies, I've kind of addressed the what the requirements are, um, so we are cracking down on illegal open burning. Um, as a matter of fact, less than two weeks ago, uh, I just issued a, a citation for an open fire, a legal open fire. Um, that's probably about a quarter mile from McDonald's uh, where somebody was burning. A lot of stuff they probably shouldn't have been burning. So, um, you know, the biggest key I think is educating our residents. Um, the, if you guys had saw the, on the fire side, the one that went out of McMail in, in April, at the end of April, I did a big article on open burning again just letting everybody know kind of what the the requirements are um to to do it i've kind of instructed the the fire chiefs to let their officers know when they do respond especially after hours when i'm not around that if they come across somebody open burning explain to them if they're they're not doing it right explain to them what they need to do and extinguish the fire um you know just put it out told them to use their discretion, especially with people who have health concerns. Um, it was something that was very big in the community that I used to work for, but we were really on top of each other compared to out here. Um, so again, we, we definitely are getting the calls, but we are, um, again, educating people, cracking down. But, but remember, ultimately, you as elected officials um, are the ones that set those, those rules and regulations. I do not. I'm just the enforcement side. A couple, two quick questions. Um, when when you said you get these calls, are these through the 911 system that, and then they go directly to the fire department or do they go to our police or both? Nine times out of 10, it comes through 911. Um, every once in a while, if it's during the day, um, somebody might call our office and then it usually gets passed down to me and then I go out and, and check it out. And again, it's, um, it's really just about educating the people. Like mm -hmm. what you, what can you burn? Really? It's a, it's a gotta be a clean, 
fuel. Exactly. It can't be anything that's going to smoke a lot. And that's that's usually what I tell them. If you can see the smoke in the air, you're probably not burning correctly. So, okay. And a second question. Um, the situation that you know one of our residents brought up is we we had an unusual situation with the Canadian wildfire smoke in our area. Is there do our officers or these fire personnel have the leeway to say, well, it's not a good idea today, please put it out, or or is it you know the law is the law? They do no, actually they do. So in the ordinance itself, um, see, it does mention. So as a fire marshal, if we do have, and it talks about at atmospheric conditions, if they're not conducive to burning, which obviously, mm -hmm. one, it's been extremely dry. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a fire hazard in itself. But then, yes, when the, you know, we had the code red or code orange, whatever it was. Yeah, the orange. Red, yeah. orange, you put it together, it's yellow. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, it's one of those ones where I can say, you know what, even if Allegheny County wasn't doing it, maybe, maybe just naturally in the canvas, it should, we shouldn't be burning. That's something that, that we can, we can enact and we can say, Hey, nobody can burn right now, except for, you know, obviously food consumption. Other than that, no open burning until such time. So yes, this, this would give us that, 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 that anyway. Thank you. Uh, Jeff. Yep. Uh, were we going to add to pictures? We can add as many as you want. Yeah. And I hope to get on our website when that yeah. goes live, that all these will be out there and then we can do a little bit yeah. better of explaining. Do, do we have a, a newsletter that goes out this summer? Um, In print. Maybe. Yeah, we used to do one. I thought somewhere that will go out this summer because we used to do a digital one in the fall. I'm just wondering if we shouldn't. Yeah, we could be that. That could be a piece of it if it's fits. Because the, the more people know about it, because mm -hmm. everybody doesn't go to the website, I think it would be better. Why will it go live? That's a great question. I'll defer that to Mr. O'Malley. After we pass this? Okay. Um, up, that's what we're asking. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant the website. Oh, the website? Oh, Is that what you're referring to? I, I don't know how to drop the update, but soon. Okay. So the question I have is, can you, can someone still support the ordinance, knowing that this is going to be expanded, this appendix? Yeah, yeah that's so not part of the ordinance. Those are just examples. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean limited to. Yeah, I'm happy to suggest just this one. Yeah, I'm too, I just necessary. didn't know, because I could think bother me at all. Three other Maybe what it needs to say is, but not limited to. Yeah, sir. This is examples, but they're not limited to. Sure, it can't it might not look exactly like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, Jeff's gonna have all that information on the website and yeah. you can put pictures until the council of the right. mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Any more questions for Jeff? Okay. We'll resolve one for a motion. I'll make the motion. Jason. To adopt tentatively identified ordinance number 1536, amending part 15 of the town code of ordinances, fire prevention code, by inserting a new article 1503 entitled open fire and burning regulations, providing a definition of open burning to regulate open fires. Sorry about that. Open fire and burning regulations, providing a definition of open burning to regulate open fires and open burning in the town and to provide fines and penalties for violations thereof. Second. Second. Uh, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next up, Jeff, is the fire safety inspection. Mm -hmm. Anyone have specific questions <clears throat> from Jeff on this one? Okay, seeing none, uh, floor is open for a motion. I'll make a motion. Ms. Clinton. To make a motion to adopt tentatively identified ordinance number 1537, amending part 15 of the Town Code of Ordinances Fire Prevention Code by inserting a new article 1505 entitled Fire Safety Inspections to require fire safety inspections of all commercial properties to authorize inspection fees and inspection reports, and to provide fines and penalties for violations thereof. 
Second. Okay. <coughs> Carolyn online. Uh, everyone in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And the last one on Jeff Smith, these stores. Uh, anybody have a question about that? No. no. So, uh, does the do we have a state building code that has a plumbing part to it? We have a county plumbing code. Do those require? Do those specify what? fittings or on a fire hydrant so yeah and it, well what it comes down to is municipality too because some fire companies might use um, national standard threads others will use what they call pittsburgh sticks. so it just really depends on those um that community as to what their hydrant connections because it has to match up with what the fire companies are using so with with the storage connections they're a universal sexless coupling that i mean that's pretty much the standard nowadays in the fire service so whether it's a mccandless fire company a uh, ross company a pine company they all use storage fittings now so if these high if you know we start getting these private hydrants in um they'll actually be able to all hook up to them any other questions for Kevin? no Okay, floor is on for promotion. Okay. Motion. motion to adopt tentatively identified ordinance number 1538, amending part 15 of the fire prevention code by inserting a new article 1507 entitled Store Z fittings to require private hydrants to be outfitted with Store Z fittings and to provide fines and penalties for violations thereof. Second. Okay. Second to Carolyn. Um, uh, everyone in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your effort. Thank you. Putting all this together and ushering it through. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, new business discussion regarding the technology. Thanks, so, Brian. Uh, Dr. Rapa um, alludes to this earlier during our. Um, section on the tech committee. Uh, what I did, I, I wrote a little memo with the approval of uh, the chair of the tech committee. Um, but basically the the tech committee has kind of been hitting a point where they're saying, what, what's the big projects we have left? Because in the last four years, they've done some awesome, amazing things um, in getting this town moving forward on software for the administration, software for our police, software for our public works, um, and also improving our security and trying to get more production out of the technology that we do have. Um, so they've taken on some big projects. They've offered a lot of help. There's a list here um, just to kind of show off everything that uh, they've added to the town as an advisory committee. Uh, however, they're kind of hitting the point of, uh, do they need to meet every single month and does it need to continue the way it is? Also, uh, three of the committee members, their uh, terms end at the end of this month and they were not interested in reapplying. Um, so. The recommendation after uh, the chair talked to me and Dr. Rapa uh, and also the whole tech committee was to suggest to, to town council to make an adjustment to this committee and uh, adjust it to an ad hoc committee versus a full public committee meeting um, that is held monthly. This ad hoc meeting would uh, be, have three members, two of the current members and um, whoever council decides to appoint as the third. And the Council would continue to appoint the members to the committee and the committee would meet as needed. Three members for three quick things. Yeah. So that was their recommendation. Um, put that together in a memo. Uh, Kathy and I wanted to share it with council. I uh, wasn't expecting action tonight, um, but wanted to let everybody know about that recommendation, let anyone think about it and ask any questions tonight if we want to or have a discussion and talk to our solicitor about what our options are about making an adjustment to a committee like that that is set in an ordinance. And and it was unanimous. The whole committee felt that. You have anything about that, Gaston? No, I have to agree with them. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure that council and Brian did a nice job of doing that, that highlight the things that they have accomplished over the last you know, three, four years. And it's quite a list. 
Uh, we're at the point right now where we're having to get the new software up and going, get people trained, we have to do all those types of things. Um, the only thing we would have left to do, um, and we talked about that, would be maybe uh, getting our mainframe over there enclosed with some air conditioning and they make it dust free, those types of things. If we do any renovations, uh, you know, like security cameras or changing the cameras in here so we can watch people behind as well as in front, those types of things, we can kind of do that with a consultant and get some advice from the ad hoc committee. So we didn't feel there was anything pressing that we would uh, need the attention of the full committee, meaning every single one. Not at this time. Any other members of council have any questions? I think they've done an outstanding job. I agree. I'm curious if those members who um, whose terms are up, are they interested in continuing as ad hoc members? Would they be willing to, you know, if there's a project come back or would we need to then search for people to come and be a part of that ad hoc committee? We believe that there's two that are just at the point in their lives that they don't want to continue um, things going on, mm -hmm. other ventures they have going on. One uh, we're trying to talk into. <laughs> uh, but we did get, did receive some applications when we did uh, first put this out. So you know, maybe we'll find some in the community that could fit in that third role. Okay. Who appoints future members? I, I would suggest the council continues to 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 appoint and recommend. Um, so just yeah, appoint they, the. They them. actually specified that we really need a security person. That would that would complement the current crew. Nice to have someone with security. A security purpose. IT security. That right. would be Think one of the things that they would uh, recommend. It's not like everyone's open to it. Corporal, what would we need to do? Well, we'll have to. Um, I think this is a, was established by resolution. Okay. Of ordinance. So I think we could just have a resolution for the future meeting. So I'll work with Tom. Um, to the extent that it's an ordinance, which I'm not seeing anything in the code that specifically set it up. Uh, <laughs> so if it's an ordinance, we have to advertise, et cetera. Um, but if it's a resolution, which I think it was, we should be able to take care of this in the future. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we think. That would just limit the number of people to create it. Make sure that the, the terms are, are uh, fitting into the new, um, you know, three-year terms or something along those lines. So we'll, we'll, we'll work it through. It's kind of like the update that we made uh, to the first element. Yeah, uh, but that's that is an order that was an order that was in the code. The tech committee is part of the code, so that's the matter. Yeah, it does look like it was created by Resolution Five of 2019. Yeah, very good. Proceed with that. That comes up next. Well, uh, next up, uh, another housekeeping thing. Brian, do you want to just normal stuff for us to destroy public records? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a certain set of standards that set by the state for how we um, destroy any public records after so many years. There's different rules for different departments, different pieces of um, historical data. Uh, for instance, there's certain things that we can never destroy and we always have to keep, but there's certain things that are financial records going back seven plus years that need to uh, be properly disposed of. And we just get a company that shreds them yes. as they come. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Any questions, Brian, before we? No. Okay. Or something for a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion to adopt tentatively identified resolution number six of the 2023 series, declaring the town's intent to destroy public records in accordance with the schedules and procedures for disposition of records as set forth in the municipal records manual approved on July 16, 1993 and as amended. Second. 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 Okay, um, everyone in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is just housekeeping for us to accept the North Hills College assault contract. Correct. Correct. Uh, Questions? Forget it. No, just correct. We're uh, we uh, took the bid with the cog, and uh, the lowest bidder was Morton Salt. Yep. Questions? Okay. 
for his own promotion. Dr. Roth. Motion to approve Northfield's Council of Government Salt Contract. Second. 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 Uh, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay, motion carries. Next up, uh, a new EAC member, Mr. Casey, do you have the recommendation? Yes, so we'll let you do the motion. I would like to make a motion to appoint Ryan Show as a member of the Environmental Advisory Committee with an unexpired term until 8 31 24. Second. Dr. Roth. Everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. aye. And last is just a housekeeping for the EAC. Jack, did you want to sure. do that one? Motion to accept the resignation of David Menard from the Environmental Advisory Committee, effective immediately. Second. Second. Everyone, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I would just like to publicly yeah. thank Dave Menard uh, for the outstanding work he did with the Environmental Advisory Committee for what pick up. Working with scouts, Mr. Case, I'm sure you want to say something different. With you. I was just going to say he has a heart of gold, but he is Mr. Trash. He not only put on all the trash programs twice a year, but he relentlessly went around the town picking up, cleaning up, notifying us of anything that needed to be corrected. And so his his efforts went a long way to keep our town clean. Yeah. Good. Okay, you will be missed. Indeed. Uh, last thing on the item, any general public comments? And if you're pop up to the microphone, name and address, you have five minutes. We have a taker. <laughs> Paul Heckman, 10529 Abbey Lane. Uh, first item is I'd like to thank the town for putting the little emblems by the storm soars on Horst Oaks Drive. I noticed them during our walk about where is this water going? Don't be dumping things down here. And I'm wondering as a private community, if those are available and advisable for us to put up by our several, several trains that people might think about going out, dumping things in without thinking about where they go. Uh, that was, was very impressive to see those going around because it's it's so easy to have a bucket of something and go, oh, yeah, just toss it out there. Um, second question I have, and this is, was sort of covered by the stores things, but as a private community and having one fire hydrant, I don't want to do anything that slows down service to my 35 homes. Will the private communities be notified that they need to do this to be in compliance with the ordinance? We can have you and Jeff get together after the meeting, and he could probably give you all the. Burn is the storage, uh, storage yes. ordinance. It's only it, it doesn't. It's that's what they, I, I hate to use the term grandfathering, but that hydrant is fine until it needs if it needs major repairs or replaced, then it has to come with compliance. Okay, so yeah. for new new construction. Definitely. New, and then if there was a major repair to a private hydrant, it would have to be updated at that point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anybody else? Name and address? Um, yes, Ellen Wright, 9635 Old Coomer Road, Allison Park, PA, 15101. And hello, Mrs. Eisner. Eisenreich. Eisenreich, thank you. Mr. Casey, Mr. Tarl, Mr. O'Malley, uh, Mr. Corbel, Dr. Rapa, and Ms. Clinton, Ms. Clinton, Ms. Clinton. So um, that Tom Hanks movie, when they're on the way to the moon and they, and they don't run out of oxygen, I love that movie. Have you seen that movie? And uh, it's a great movie. So they're on, they run out, they're, something's wrong with the oxygen. So in mission control, they pull out all these things and they say, hey, look, this is the, what they have on board and you have to figure out how to get them oxygen so that they can get back. They're not going to the moon anymore. And they pull out all these miscellaneous things and at the end of the movie, they figured it out and they have a way to get back from the moon. So um, when I think of the proposal for the zoning code, I think of all the, I think of 
it's sort of like having all those different things on the table and we have to figure out how to get back from the moon because we're running out of oxygen. The zoning code just does not feel solid to me. It feels haphazard. And um, so I'm curious, how many of you have actually seen the comments that came back from the county about the zoning code? That's right, this is just comments. So, okay, yeah, all right, my fault. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, so I would let, hopefully that you would have seen the comments that came back from the county about the zoning code. Um, related to the zoning code itself, the county had uh, 33 comments and related to the uh, subdivision and land use ordinance, Zaldo, they had um, 16 comments. Comments for the subdivision and land use ordinance, Zaldo, um, included asking if the um, some of the definitions were verbatim from the municipal planning code, in which they highly recommended. Um, on the zoning comments, um, number eight, they had some question. They had under Article thirteen oh two point one with respect to the establishment of zoning districts. We recommend that the zoning districts be evaluated in conjunction with the municipality's comprehensive plan. Um, number nine, under the zoning, they said under subsection 110 and zoning district hierarchy, the reasoning behind the hierarchy is not clear. For example, it states that it represents a progression from the most restrictive, restrictive to least respective, restrictive. If each zoning district has specific regulations, it is not clear what the purpose is behind the hierarchy in this section. This should be clarified. So the county had some comments related to both the zoning and the saldo, and it seems that it would um, make sense for McCandless to address these and completely before approving a um, zoning, new zoning ordinance and map and a new subdivision and land use ordinance because it, I understand there's been expense up front to get us this far, but to do it right and have it done right so that it doesn't cost the town more later on because things were not addressed up front. So that's my comment for today. And I highly recommend the movie on a rainy day that we're having. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Green. Are there any other uh, public comments? Sir, name and address. Arjun Puri, uh, 209 Ada West Drive. Um, I'd just like to say thank you uh, for the addition of the pickleball courts uh, in the recreational area just behind us. Um, I know, you know, my friends, peers, me and many others really like it. Um, but I'd also like to say, um, or sort of make a request um, to my friends, peers and I um, go to the volleyball courts or pickleball courts um, or basketball courts and we tend to go in the evening and, um, you know, it does get dark out eventually. And, you know, we're playing and then we realize, you know, it's dark and probably shouldn't be playing anymore. Um, so I just like to make a, uh, a request or sort of um, say that lights in that area would be a great addition. Um, yeah, that's much all. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. We can uh, hook you up with the uh, guy who's in charge of that afterwards here. <laughs> <laughs> the lights <laughs> guy. <laughs> I think he's going to be on. So, sir. Uncle Puri, 209 Edelweiss Dive in Wexford, PA. And I don't want to take up too much time because I know when uh, meetings run late, you want to get out of here. The you have one, five minutes. Well, this is what happens with the ambulance authority. <laughs> when, when there's time to get out in time one day, you don't want people holding you up. So, uh, again, a comment about the pickleball course. So, pickleball is up fastest growing sport in America right now. Pickleball courts are in high demand. We've got multiple courts in the area. I appreciate the four courts we have, but one of the things that we run into and uh, friends uh, from the town that play is uh, a lot of times, particularly in the evenings, when we get here, the courts are often taken over by leagues, 15, 20 people, even more coming together and then taking up the course for hours on end and then just rotating through. 
what ends up happening with that is uh, town members a lot of times are not able to get on court. It's the same thing, you know, we have eight courts in North Park, there's uh, four here, there's a bunch of other courts around and a lot of these high volume uh, people end up taking up the courts and then clogging them up for hours on end. One of the things that I've noticed in certain uh, communities that they have done, I know Treesdale has that, Newberry Park has that, there is an ability to block for town residents to book course an hour at a time. And I wonder if the council uh, would uh, consider something like that for town residents to be able to make bookings on these courts uh, so that town residents will have some sort of priority in being at least able to get on course. That was it. Give your comments. Anyone else here tonight? Okay. Seeing not meeting is adjourned. Thank you.